Okay, Teacher Tech Camp is back. I'm so excited. Rob has been looking into the basics of Manicam and how it can affect your computer's performance. We will talk about compatibility, why Manicam may not work with your computer or may not be working on your computer. Also stick around Mac users and PC users because we have a special bit of information for you concerning Manicam that will just make your day. I'm Teacher Leah of TeacherLeah.com for the best information you can receive to build your online teaching business. Please subscribe to my channel, like this video, and ring the bell so you can get notified of videos every week. Hello, Rob. So you've been looking into Manicam, and from what I gathered from our conversation earlier, is you want to help online teachers understand the compatibility issues and how Manicam can affect, your, can affect your computer before you answer the burning question, why won't Manicam work with my computer? You also have some news concerning Mac and PC users. So let's get into what you had to say about compatibility upgrades and things like that. And then we will answer the burning question of what is the big news Manicam has and perhaps ask in, in the comments below your questions concerning Manicam, maybe he can help you understand why it's not working on your computer. Okay, good morning, and thank you, Leah, for that introduction. One of the things that I've found out, and I have used Manicam a few times, so I'm not quite a subject matter expert. However, I have spoken with some of their staff. I have uh, talked with other people who are using it from Q Kids, VIP Kids, and of course, uh, oh, okay. And interestingly enough, I found out that, yes, they do realize that there is an issue with Max. However, what they told me first and foremost, and this is something that I've said in some of our previous videos, is before they get into that, which we will cover at the end, is the first thing that they like to cover is the compatibility of the current computer system that you're using, which includes not only your computer, but your router, your modem, which we're going to cover that in just a second, as well as your internet service provider and the bandwidth that they're giving to you. Because just like everything else on your computer and everything else that we're using today, because most of us are now doing home office type uh, settings, is that a lot of the markets are being saturated with their use. So sometimes you may have a computer that everything is fine on your end, it's just with everybody working from home, it has really bogged down a lot of the systems and the servers because they were not designed for this. And then all of a sudden now they're trying to catch up. But what they did say is that one of the things that you should look at is that when you buy the base of the entry model computer and it says it has X capability and that it can run this and then you look at Manicam, and it says it requires, these are the, and it usually says, just like when you used to go back to the store and you would go grab a box off the shelf with either the CD or the, the online download, it would tell you the minimum system requirements. I want you to understand that is the minimum. So when you get minimum, that's like putting my Honda Accord next to a Ferrari. My Honda, yes, it was gonna get me from point A to point B, but it's not, it's not going to be the, it's not going to be near as fast. Or it's not going to be the ride like I'm going to have in a Ferrari. That's the difference between having the latest, greatest computer and having something that may be a few months or even a few years old. Because as we all know, technology is constantly upgrading. As soon as you buy something off the shelf, it seems like there's something newer. So in order to do this, what I want people to understand is look at your system requirements. Do you have the speed from your internet? Do you have the bandwidth, which is how many devices or how many applications you can run and be able to continue to keep that speed without getting bogged down, as well as, this is what we're going to talk about, upgrades. Even on, on most computers, you have the ability, if you're having problems and they finally narrow it down to where it's, it's not your bandwidth, it's not your speed, it's not something coming from your product suppliers such as Manicam, Zoom, or YouTube, uh, NetMeeting, whatever, you may have to look at whether or not you take it to someone like either Geek Squad or you take it to a Genius Bar and they say, 
you know, to get the performance that you're wanting out of this computer, one of two things, you'll need a new computer or you're going to have to put in hardware that's going to support those needs. Now, those are your upgrades and often those upgrades include one, your internet or wired connection, wireless, wired or wireless, two, your motherboard, your, which is your, your general processing unit, which tells you how fast you can do the computing speed. And the last is going to be, and this is one of those things, graphic cards. Graphic cards, because they're able to, they're the ones who do all the uh, rendering for all of your video. Your video cards, your graphic cards, those are the things that can cause you issues. And interestingly enough, I've seen to where we've gone out to go look at somebody's and I was like, you know, I don't know who put your computer together, but I'm sorry, you have the wrong cards in your system. This is mostly for somebody who's a PC. For somebody who's buying from an Apple, they're usually a standalone. You can't go in there and mess with it. So with that being said, now I want to talk about certain parts of Manicam in and of itself. Manicam, as we've discussed, knows that there are some problems running with Mac. That's just the nature of the way that they wrote their programming. It has some issues. They do have a support team that you can report your crashes to. And they will. what they do is they run a running tally is how often that that's crashing with this type of problem. And they go in, they look at their software. And that's why you're going to find out there's going to be different versions of the software. Now, that's where also before we get into where I'm going to split off to Mac and PC, you need to go look at your general settings. The general settings, and you can go in and customize these on Manicam. It will first ask you about your language. It'll ask you about run Manicam on the startup. I, if, if this is going to be your standalone computer, yes, run it on startup. You want to have it clicked on there to notify about new versions of Metacam. You want it to pop up if it's going to have any updates, which we're going to get to in a minute. It's going to talk about frame transitions, force driver output resolutions, and then there's the different types of hardware accelerations. Usually these will default to your settings on your computer when it runs its auto detect and setup. But one of the most important things, and then we're gonna go into this in a minute, is once the, is the Manicam versions. Now with that, I'm gonna turn it over to you for just a minute before I get into that, because these are gonna be unique to PC and for uh, Macs. Okay, so before we get into that, and also I wanna let everybody know, my little robotic vacuum is running in the background, so if you can hear it, I do apologize. But before, wraps, before Rob wraps up with the latest news from Manicam for PC and Mac users, comment below with your questions for Manicam. And do you use Manicam? What are your issues with Manicam? Do you have any tips for using Manicam in the online classroom? Also, like this video if you find it informative and helpful. All right, Rob, back to you with the latest from Manicam. Okay, if you're using Manicam and you're having issues for Windows, I want you to look and see if your version is version 7.6.0.10. And it has a lot of new features on it. It also has a fix on it that allows you to select JPEG files for virtual backgrounds. So if you're having problems with your virtual background, which Manicam provides a great deal of them, this is the version you should be running. You can also go back to older versions if for some reason you're running an older computer and you're running into compatibility issues. But for the most part, a lot of the problems you don't have with Windows, it does have a lot of new features that they've added with this new version because they, as once again, you wanna have the latest and greatest if you can, if, if your computer supports that. It allows the draw on desktop feature is now free, which makes it a really interesting product. And you can add different layer corners, can be rounded, you can do different things. I don't know how many of you are familiar with these types of layouts when you're setting up your main cam. But for the most part, PCs have been running pretty good. They haven't had a lot of enhancements. That major fix though, is something that for those of you who are having issues, take a look at that version. Now, going to Max. Max 
had a little bit more in-depth issue. And they just did a recent uh, fix. And this fix, they just did on August 27th of 2020. So it's pretty darn new. And that it does a lot of new features, but the fix just before that, as you go and you look in the versions, it actually went through a plethora of fixes it, because there were, I should say there were, I, if memory serves me correct, there were about seven major issues that were going with connectivity, they were going with uh, whether or not your resolution was matching up. These things, hopefully, they're going to be fixed with this new patch. But once again, that's version 7.4.0.13. So once again, running what version you're using will also determine whether or not you're having those issues. Now, at this point, I know there's probably a lot of questions about Manicam and about why it has these different options and different features that are going to be available for Mac or PC. The best way that I can explain that to you is because, once again, the programming department is trying to find things that are going to be compatible. So at this point, are there any questions? I don't see any questions in the comment box, but that doesn't mean they won't start. So for me, I have a Mac and I know that Macs have been the notorious one for, it might be working fine, then suddenly it stops working and that could be due to updates. It could be to the processor that you're using. It could be to running too many applications in the background, like you said earlier. So uh, those are some of the things. Now, the one thing that uh, <clears throat> we have talked about before is when you're using how do you find out what card you need well what card you're going to need is also going to depend upon what your failures are what your what the system requires certain computers are set up to where they have things integrated into that you don't have to play with uh specifically Apple, they usually have an all-in-one. They, they don't like you going in there and playing with how they have their things set up. PCs are a little bit more of a Frankenstein. You can build it pretty much how you like to do certain things that you want. Now, case in point with my son, he went completely overboard with his. He had it to where he could build his computer that he used just for video games to where he could run up to 28 monitors and he could run into the server. He didn't need a liquid cooled power supply or a liquid cooled motherboard, but he went for those options because he <clears throat> it was the latest, greatest thing. Now, did he really need it? Was it overkill? Yes. But does he have any issue? Does he have any issues with video? Does he have any issues with speed? Absolutely not. It doesn't matter where he goes. He knows that when he plugs that in, if there's a problem, 99.9% .9 of the time, it's either the, uh, the server that he's using, the internet, the or the internet service provider, or it's something on the end of the devices outside of his, such as uh, whatever whoever he's linked in with. Was it spoiling the child a bit? Of course, because you know he's an only child. But the other part of that is, I didn't have to deal with any IT issues on my end, which was one less thing to worry about. <laughs> okay so i'm going to stop that vacuum i don't know what it's doing in there but <laughs> i hear tink 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 so anyway speaking of it issues but that's not what we're talking about today notably nancy has commented um <clears throat> now i'm going to give you all the information that she has here i just put in eight gigabytes of memory to up my memory to 16 gig Okay. Her processor is an i5 and can't be upgraded. Her issue is that when she's recording for YouTube and she presses pause, it freezes and then it goes into fast forward and loses the sound. She's running Windows 10. She's also mm -hmm. having a problem beyond a certain point on the VIP, VIP Kid teaching platform that uh, she can only do the basic things on the platform and she's connected by Ethernet. So she is hardwired in. So what I'm wondering, could this be the processor issue? 
Well, the i5 is an older version. I know that they right now they have they have where the I believe the when you go to buy them they will sell you maybe an i7 is the bottom. Uh, you're referring to the i the Intel i7 processors. I would assume that's what she's got on there. It says okay. i5, so right. Uh, the thing with that is there's many different versions of the i5 processor. And the other part of that is there's a lot of different versions of your Windows, even 10, because they have system updates. They have mandatory updates, which are or they suggest that are required. Then they have what they call hot fixes. As you go in, you look at your system and you click on system update, it will usually on your Mac, on your PCs, sorry, it will give you a list of certain updates that are available. Sometimes those updates will fix the problem, but I'm going to say with an i5, you're probably at the end of the usable life expectancy. If you're trying to run newer gear, you will have issues. Now, I will add, I just recently bought my iMac desktop, and I had gone on, I, how long would you say I've had this iMac desktop? About a couple of weeks, maybe. A couple of weeks. We talked so, about, about the processor. Well. Right, yeah, yeah. so, There's yeah. I, yeah, with this iMac, I went on the week before to check the prices, and I wasn't quite ready to buy one because I was talking to Rob about which one I should have and going over different things. So, anyway, it... I had it all set up and saved and I went back the following week and it was a completely different computer and the price went up because that's when they just, I, I guess I had hit them on that week when they were selling out all the i5s. And then when I went in there to find out what was going on, I realized you couldn't choose i5 anymore. And I wasn't choosing i5, but I did notice that an i7 became the base. And, um, she says that it's an HP. It's about three years old at this point. Uh, I mean, unfortunately, I could have bought an i5, that, but had something that would soon become outdated. Okay, I'm going to go back to notably Nancy's question because there's actually three other parts of this answer because I, I want to make sure that they, you know, you can get an answer, but it's not a complete answer and it may not be the answer you're looking for, even if it's correct. You could buy a computer that's, you bought three years ago, but it could be at the end of its what they what they call sellable the word I want to look for here. In the marketplace, I'm gonna have a bunch of things that's gonna come into my supply chain that they may have been there for a year. So even if you get it at and it's three years old, the technology and the instruments inside of it may be a year, sometimes two years old. And many things have come down the line and different changes in that i5 processor to where it may not be the latest, greatest processor in the i5 line. And that's why they, after a while, they'll switch to the i7 and then they'll switch to the, I, the i9. And now I believe you would put a nine in your, in your system, if memory serves me correct. You mean mine? Yes. Mine's an i10. That, that's right. Okay. I stand corrected because we had, to, you had the option to get it and you're like, yes, do it. Because you were asking me, I was like, yeah, let's wait a week and see what comes out. And sure enough, they did. They cut out everything on the five line. It's yeah. even an option. But once again, that's also because what they put into those processors and what they, what they did is they literally did in their supply chain, first in, first out, they got rid of all their old stock. Yep. That's why at a lower price and all of the newer updated versions and models were out and that unfortunately probably is the issue with miss uh notably nancy's computer is that what i'm wondering is yeah. you know i know she's not ready for uh she said it could be time for a major upgrade but she's not quite ready for it price wise i mean she is looking right. at hp so what I'm wondering is, could she jump to an i7? Would that be advisable? See if see what the price, just at least see what the price range is for an i7. Understanding that perhaps, I mean, if it's not something that's going to, she said something about the VIP Kid teaching platform. Right. Have an issue with that, 
or does or maybe perhaps get an external hard drive and clean out the computer you well that's two different things the, i know uh, i know i'm trying the, to see well, where we could go some because it depending on how when you look at your hard drive that your internal space the more that you have crammed on that hard drive the harder the processor is having to run sometimes that does fix the problem i have external hard drives i have some that are as small as one terabyte i have some that are 10 terabytes i have one that's a, a, a gigantic one and i'll just leave it at that and these are all external portable hard drives i can just pick up and take to any of my other stations or i can yeah you told me else. to get one i got the thunderbolt i think it's is it two terabyte or three terabyte i got a big one right for me yeah. Anyway. That, that's that's a decent size one. Uh, when you get in the, the 10 and the 20 terabytes, that's when they're, you know, you're hauling a lot of data, but that's usually for somebody who's stocking back a lot of video, a lot of, a lot of interesting programs that are being compiled together to where they can take an entire workstation with them. But yeah. that's for another conversation. Uh, <laughs> But, but so right now she's at is what would you say is the minimum processor that is reasonable to run this stuff? I, my personal opinion, I would look at at least the i7. If you have the ability to go with an i9 or, or the i10, I would. However, comma space, pause for effect, shop around. Would you suggest looking at tigerdirect.com? There are a lot of, I don't like to endorse one specific company. I know, but other, they seem to be like the Walmart of computers, you know, there you or go. Best Buy or somewhere like that. I like Best Buy. Uh, the reason, well, I'm going to, I'll say this, and this is not besmirching Walmart, but you know, you can go in there and you can buy a cheap 75 inch TV. Right. Compared to I can go down to Costco or I can go down to Best Buy and you're like, well, why is it $400, $500, $1,000 more? Well, that has to deal with the quality of the TV. Yeah. It's still the same size. It still does the same thing. It still has somewhat the same visual effects, but it does not have all of the enhancements that go along with it. That's like buying two different versions of the i7 of the i or the i9 or the i10 there are different versions of them because as you look at them, it will tell you what its computing capability and power is. It will also tell you what it works in handshaking with enhancements as far as memory wise. Now there's a difference between your memory and your hard drive. Your memory, the more memory you have, the, the faster or the more capable your computer has of being able to do computations because it has more space for it to literally think. You understand what I'm saying? Whereas yeah. the hard drive is more like- So a, perhaps if she's going to consider something budget wise and she wants to just do her homework, she could, we probably need to make up a guide for helping somebody find the right, you know, price point, so to speak. What is the difference between the i the, the processors? What is the difference between, you know, to sh a shopping guide, so to speak? You know, I could probably do that every week on a Monday. And this week, I'm going to cover processors. Uh, well, that's the difference between going with the eyes, eyes uh, the eye line, which is Intel, and the AMDs. And one thing that people talk to me about, and this is a conversation my son and I had, it was overclocking your processor. In other words, making it run faster than it's supposed to. Mm -hmm. You can do that. But once again, I would remind you the candle that burns twice as bright burns half as long. Yeah. The other part of that is if you have the option to buy something that's overclocked, why would you buy something that's overclocked? Once again, my opinion, when you can buy a higher grade processor that will do it without having it to over, overwork itself. And that's where you look at the price difference. Well, you know, what, because of what I looked at when I was going to get my iMac desktop, the difference between an i7 and an i10 for my situation wasn't a game breaker. And I've been saving up for this sort of thing. I knew it was coming. I knew I needed to upgrade. 
I knew that my laptop was not going to be handle all the things that I wanted to do. So I saved up for that. Now, notably, Nancy, I believe, has just started off in this business for a few years, and she started off going into some other ventures. So she probably has not had that time that I said, okay, this is, I need the big dog. But if you really look at the price and you're, if you're going to do your processor, if you want to start at the processor, I would suggest look at what the difference is in just changing the processor. Don't look at all the apps and everything that you can add. Look at the difference in the processor. And then you go into your storage issue. Those are the two things I would think that you need to address first. Right. I, I would look at processing your graphics and video capability because if you're going to be either creating video or creating graphics or using it for multiple screens such as my son liked his for gameplay but that it is what it is the, the higher the resolution the better the camera the better the better well and that goes with people trying to do youtube videos too but exactly. how, how good do you want it to look on your screen? You know, for example, they say that, what is it? It's not the iMac. It's the next one up from the iMac. Um, it's like a, it, this, this computer costs almost $10,000 for Mac. It's a desktop, but it's the next step up from iMac. And it's for gaming. It's for those people that want just amazing video. And do I need that? Not really, not really, because I'm editing video. I need good clarity. I need to see what's going on. Yes, but I'm not showcasing the video from my computer. Right. The other, the, the thing that I look at with this is you need to look at how much you're willing to spend and what is the, what you call the life expectancy or the usable life expectancy of that computer how long am i going to be able to use this am i going to get the bang for my buck because honestly you can go out you can buy a cheaper computer and then you may a year and a half two years later have to replace it or like i have said i we were discussing this this morning i have three different mac minis in the house okay do you think mac is a better system Honestly, for ease of use and my personal opinion, I like Mac. I like Mac because I can go buy it and there's very little that I have to change with it. And for people who don't like change, if you buy something, the one that I'm running in, in here is a 2014. It's six years old. Yeah, Macs do seem to have a longer lifespan. Then a, exactly. then a PC. They are pretty easy to use. They're pretty maintenance free. You just have to stay on top of the updates. Now I used to do PC and because I had an iPhone and was starting to get more Mac products, I decided to go with Mac. And honestly, I know they're more expensive. I know they are, but I have had very little issues with a Mac compared to a PC. My wife and my son are, are PC, diehard PC fans. Uh, my wife is starting to come over to the dark side of liking, <laughs> liking apples because I have Apple TV in every room. I have all, in, in our major rooms, we have a Mac Mini that we can link up to, which means if we're watching TV on the Mac, it literally, if you have your phone off to the side, it will give you a pop-up telling you what's, you know, what's going on. We can do transitions from the iPads, the iPad Pros, but she, for work, for her work, and because of a lot of the software and a lot of the hardware that they use, it requires a PC. I, they're the drawback of having a Mac is that there's a lot of things that are not compatible with Mac. They're not cross compatible. Now, I will say with my years, I mean, I've done 7,000 classes with online teaching, blah, blah, blah. But that means that I've also been in these groups for the past two plus years. And I will say that overall, there are less instances and issues with the apps, with these companies, with Mac users versus right. the PC users. And that could very well be because we're dealing with China. Now. Manicam is the exception to the rule on this. I will say, yeah. 
Because we're talking about Manicam. Manicam doesn't like Mac, but Manicam's no, working. It does not. <laughs> but that's the reason why last week we had a different version on the fix than we do this week. Because if you notice, the version that I talked about this week is version 7.4.0.13, which is dated August 27th. So yeah. literally four days ago. <laughs> yeah, they made a new change for Mac users. And that's that's great because the other option is Cam Twist. And Cam Twist is Mac friendly, right. but it's also very antiquated looking. And, and which, I mean, it's antiquated looking, but it's up to date with the Mac users. But that means there's more IT knowledge that you need <laughs> in order to use Cam Twist. And Manny Cam's more user friendly. But well, it, Today, doesn't play well with Mac. <laughs> well, what's interesting is when we were talking about all the uh, the different versions, the version today, six point, I'm sorry, seven point six point zero point ten is dated today for Windows on Manicamp. Yeah, that is today's newest fix. And like I said, the the thing was, and I'm going to scroll up so that I read it right. It allows you to fix JPEG files as virtual backgrounds. Before you couldn't do that. And that was a big complaint in many of the uh, online teacher groups was I can't get my background to work. There it is. And this was this was the hot fix that they just did. And I'm pretty sure if they haven't done it yet for peace for uh, for Max, it's coming. So, oh, yeah. yes, they do. They do actually hear you and they do actually go through. Now, if you go into the it download, could just take some time to catch up with Mac because Mac does seem to be like constantly. Yes. <laughs> right now, you can go into the change list if you go into this, and I'll go into. Now, I'm going to go into this just for what I'm looking here, and I've got all the way going back to uh, eight eleven, which is version seven point four point zero, that talks about all the changes. So if you go in and you go back into Manicam and you go actually into their downloads, it will tell you from Mac and PC what changed with each one of those versions. So if you were having a version that was running fine prior, and then now you have a version that's not, that you're running into issues, yeah. and that could, that could be because of your version, and it also could be because if you know, you're running an i5 and it doesn't like the new hey i got you i gotta get you to do so much more you may have to go back and put an older version which means and this is what i need to tell everyone when you go in and you do a version the best thing you can do save your data uninstall and then reinstall the new version that because way you catch up, right, with all the other stuff that was there. Well, not only that, but if there was a problem with your download on the first time, something may have not quite downloaded right. right. You may have missed something. There may have been a glitch in the system. It happens. Sometimes uninstalling and reinstalling the software will, will fix that issue. Because sometimes it doesn't catch it. And then it's like, well, I'm not going to do that because I didn't get that part of the code. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, Very cool. Any other questions? Well, yeah, I believe we have asked, uh, we have answered all the questions. If you do have more questions, you can email us at teachertechcamp at gmail.com. And if you would like to learn more about online teaching or want to keep your business growing into that successful professional educational platform that you have always dreamed of, check out the links in the description. You'll also find the Teacher Tech Camp guide that you can download along with pl playlists, resources to create your online classroom and schedule a course with me to help you build a wildly successful online teaching business. While you're commenting below, give me some feedback. What do you want to see us cover? What Want to know more about available software, websites, tech equipment, uh, reviews? Please let us know in the comments below. And by all means, if you like this video, hit the like button. Be sure to subscribe and ring that bell so that you will get notified every week of live sessions along with uploaded videos. And please do share this video with your online friends. See you next Monday at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye-bye. <laughs> If notably